Good evening and welcome to our tribute for distinguished Professor Minzo with appreciation to Walter and Shirley Wong. My name is Keith Camacho and I am the chair of the Asian American Studies Department and the associate director of the Asian American Studies Center. I am also your MC for tonight's celebration in honor of Min's stellar record of scholarship, leadership, and mentorship at UCLA across the country and internationally. Before I begin, I also want to acknowledge the Tongva community, the indigenous peoples of this campus and greater Tavongar or Los Angeles. I also want to thank the Asian American Studies Center, the Asia Pacific Center, and the Sociology Department for co-sponsoring this wonderful event. Our benefactors, Walter and Shirley Wong, deserve much recognition as well for kindly establishing the chair and advancing research on U.S. relations. Thank you, Walter and Shirley. I also want to thank Executive Vice Ch Chancellor and Provost Darnell Hunt and Interim Dean of the College of Social Sciences, Abel Valenzuela, for your continued support of men and our many colleagues and students. Please, everybody, give them a big hand. It goes without saying that Min is a rock star. She, she is not only a distinguished professor of sociology and Asian American studies at UCLA, as well as a Walter and Shirley Wong endowed chair in US-China relations and communications. Min is also an inducted member of the National Academy of Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Min is also the recipi recipient of more than 20 book and teaching awards spanning her illustrious career. Due in large part to her leadership, Min also chaired the Asian American Studies Interdepartmental Program as well as, well as served as the founding chair of the department in 2004. Reflecting, reflecting upon Min's landmark contributions, Valerie Matsumoto, a professor of history and Asian American studies, and the George and Sakaye Aratani Chair on Japanese American Incarceration, Redress, and Community had this to say, quote, Min is not only one of the most brilliant, accomplished scholars I know, but also one of the most generous and collegial. We have benefited immensely from her deep knowledge and savvy advice about how the university operates, end quote. Tu Hong Win Vo, a professor of Asian languages and cultures and Asian American studies similarly noted, quote, Min has brought prestige and inspiration to us with her astonishingly prolific and groundbreaking scholarship. We have come a long way from our days as an interdepartmental program whose small faculty met in a tiny room in Campbell Hall. And Min has been with, every, uh, with us every step of the way, end quote. Echoing Valerie Tuhong and our many colleagues and students, I likewise want to my express, express my sincerest appreciation and gratitude to Min for preparing the Asian American Studies Department for the many research opportunities and challenges of the 21st century. Thank you, Min. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vice Provost of the Institute of American Cultures, David Yu. Thank you, Keith. Good evening, everyone. I have the honor today of introducing distinguished UCLA alumna Shirley Wang, who is a CEO of PlasPro, a leading manufacturer of award-winning um, home products and fiberglass doors. And her husband, Walter Wang, is president and CEO of JM Eagle, the world's largest plastic pipe company. In addition to their accomplishments in the business world, which are formidable, the Wangs are philanthropists in many different arenas. Uh, including major sponsorship for the Emmy-nominated PBS documentary, Becoming American, The Chinese Experience by Bill Moyers, which some of you may have seen. They have also helped the world to understand pressing issues of our times through two 
Academy Award nominated documentaries. A 2007 film on AIDS in China that won the Academy Award in the short documentary category. And a 2010 film on environmental issues that sparked a landmark effort to clean up toxic waste in China. As well as in education in 2008, as we have heard, uh, through their generosity, the Wangs established at UCLA the first endowed chair focused on both US-China relations and Chinese-American studies in US higher education. The Wang chair has supported the research and teaching efforts of our amazing colleague, Min Zhou, and who we are honoring tonight. And their support has enabled Professor Zhou to really work with multiple units at UCLA, but also with universities and colleagues uh, throughout the United States and many other parts of the world. And they focused on international, transnational, and interdisciplinary issues relevant to Chinese America, US-China relations, and the Asia Pacific region. Um, if any of you have known, you know, Min, you know, in terms of her energy and her span is truly uh, amazing. And so the Institute of American Cultures and, and the Asian American Studies Center are deeply grateful to the Wangs for their leadership, vision, and commitment to create a more inclusive American and global society, especially promoting better understanding and appreciation of US-China relations. Please join me in welcoming Shirley Wang. So, you know, today it's about Ming. It's not about Walter and Shirley Wang. I hope everybody was very clear about that because Ming is so special. And I'm so sorry that Walter is not here. He usually he, we're joined by the hip, but he got tore his quad muscle, so unfortunately he's not here. He's, he's the better half, so you only, you only get me, okay? But um, anyways, Walter and I decided that um, um, to d endow this chair, and I have to say I, th the culprit is Trisha Toyota. Please raise your hand, Trisha. Where are you? So Trisha, you know, she came up to Walter and I and said, hey, you know, um, there's no Asian American Studies chair or, you know, this, this ever in UCLA. And I was shocked because, I mean, UCLA has over 40%, I think over 45% um, Asians at UCLA. And we don't have an Asian American chair. That's, that's terrible. So Walter and I said, we have to do something about that because we need to raise Asian voices. And so we said, okay, let's do it. And, and Trisha got us to do it, and, and here we are. And, and then, uh, it's the first time I've ever had a, um, did an endowed chair. And so I didn't know the process. I was like, oh, we have an endowed chair, so do we get to pick the professor or anything like that? And then, <laughs> as you can see from the laughter, it is a resounding no. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is decided by the Senate and all this faculty and all these different things. And so we have no say. And then they said, okay, this is the person that you get. You get Ming Zhou. And I was like, who is this woman? Who is she? I mean, why does she get this? And then, and then they told me, oh, she published 19 books and 200 articles. And I'm like, that shut me up real quick. <laughs> Because I'm sitting here like, wow, she's so prolific. Then I started to wonder, you know, how does she have time to be in Tao Chair? She wrote 19 books and 200 articles. She's writing all day long. But, you know, as you can see, you know, she is truly a rock star, prolific, amazing, passionate, energetic. I mean, so much so that, you know, as our endowed chair, I mean, people across the world say, hey, I heard from the Walter and Shirley Wang endowed chair professor Ming Zhou, and I'm like, wow, she's really enhancing my reputation because <laughs> she's all over the world and, and talking about stuff. So I, I, I'm, I'm really appreciative of Ming for you know not only doing the work that she does, but she's enhanced our reputation <laughs> as well. Um, so, I mean, as, as, as we already seen, and I'm, I'm gonna repeat myself, but um, not only did she serve as our chair, she, she served at, on the UCLA Academic Personnel Council. She's raised over $7 million for the UCLA Asia Pacific Center. That's like also unheard of, right? Was a co-editor in chief of the Journal of Chinese Overseas, served as the president of the North American Sociologist Association, served as a member of the, both the US National Academy of Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. I mean, she was 
the recipient of two American Sociological Association Association Awards, the Distinguished Career Award of the Section on International Migration, and the Contribution in the Field Award of the Section Asian and Asian America. I mean, that's a mouthful. As you can see, I should just shut up, just like when I found out that she was it, because it's just so long. Her resume is so long and so illustrious, right? And so, but at the same time, I'm so saddened. I mean, we are honoring her, and she's retiring from this position, because I mean, I can't imagine anyone as prolific, as energetic, as passionate, as, you know, doing such great contributions in the world. So, she, I mean, she's really changed the landscape with regards to Asian Americans and their plight. She's given definition to the Asian American diaspora through her books and her articles on contemporary issues surrounding historical, social, and political factors in immigration to the U.S. I mean, Without her, we, there, there wouldn't be a lot of definitions or, or n known about us because we're so silent. And because of what she's done, people ha actually hear us and know and how to define us and get to know us better. So like she's talked about the Asian American achievement paradox and the rise of the new second generation of Asian Americans. I mean, I'm, I wanna read those books because I'm trying to understand it. So it's like, you know, you're amazing. I mean, you, you really have, you know, raised all of us by, by your work. So I salute you for all your accomplishments and hope that you continue to make a difference in this arena and in the world. And thank you, men, for who you are, your energy, your passion. You're un it's un incomparable, right? And the volumes of uh, contributions you have made, which are innumerable. So thank you, and I may God bless you always. Thank you so much, Shirley. And, and for the uh, folks here, staff, alumni, faculty, leadership, there's two kinds of faculty at UCLA. There's stellar scholars like Min, who write over 19 books and 200 articles, and there's academics like myself, who could tell you how many 19 movies are out there and 200 TV series, <laughs> right? So if you want to talk TV and movie, please come to me. <laughs> but uh, as we move through the program uh, more seriously, I want to introduce our next tribute speaker, Vice Provost of International Studies and Global Engagement, Cindy Pham. Thank you, Keith. Um, Min, do you feel like you're getting married today? <laughs> Where's Sam? Raise your hand, Sam. Congratulations to both of you. This Probably no better time to talk about U.S.-China relations and communications. Tomorrow's a big day, okay? Tomorrow in San Francisco, President Biden is scheduled to meet with President Xi from China. And this morning, in a hotel in San Francisco, I picked up a couple of newspapers. The first one I picked up is China Daily that shows President Xi with the background, which is the Golden Gate Bridge. And so it was really difficult to decide whether I would stay in San Francisco <laughs> or come back here to celebrate you, Min, but of course you win. <laughs> the two presidents, they lost. Um, I think I'm not gonna try to repeat um, all the accolades that people have said, but um, I think many people agree that the relations between, the bilateral relations between the U.S. and China, um, it, it is the most important bilateral relations now. But of course, Shirley and Walter already knew about that more than 15 years ago. And so it's their vision that led to the creation, establishment of this endowed chair uh, on U.S. relations and U.S.-China relations and communications. Not only that, they also funded a media brief also um, in the Asian American Studies Center. Uh, when Shirley was president of the UCLA Foundation, she also led a delegation to visit China. So uh, their vision, it it's continues to be important today. And I want to also thank uh, Professor David Yu, um, Vice Provost for Institute of American Cultures, and also Professor Karen Imamoto, um, Director of the Asian American Studies Center for their leadership because the chair is housed in Asian American Studies Center. 
So another paper that newspaper that I picked up this morning is San Francisco Chronicle. Okay, they did not have President Xi or President Biden on the front page, but they had the story about APAC, and the title is APAC: A Major Opportunity for Chinatown. And if you talk about Chinatown, you have to talk about Min, right? So. Min and I go way back. We were rotating between um, uh, several years in terms of chairing IDPs, and you already learned about her being elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences last year and National Academy of Sciences this year. Before you know it, she will get an Oscars soon. <laughs> so it goes without saying that she's an intellectual giant, but I wanted to highlight a few things about her vision for the chair. Her vision is a global vision. Number one, her research on diasporas, Asian Americans, Chinese, um, Chinese Americans, et cetera, et cetera. We, Asian Americans, continue to be haunted by the forever foreigner syndrome. And so US-China relations affects Asian Americans, uh, affects Chinese Americans. Anti-Asian hate continues to exist in this country, despite the fact that we're no longer wearing masks, for COVID, and so her work continues to really project a global vision about US-China relations. Number two, as director of the Asia Pacific Center, one of the 27 centers within the International Institute, she created a number of initiatives, including the Global Chinese Philanthropy Initiative that I think you saw some images of. And so she's introducing to the world a new generation of Chinese not as competitors, but as contributors and as partners uh, to help to shape a better future for the world. Number three, when two countries, when the relations between two countries is tense, universities have a special role to play, and that is they should continue to collaborate and exchange ideas. And Min has taken UCLA faculty to Tsinghua University to Zhejiang University, and I think Roger um, Wadinga, I saw you somewhere, I think you were part of that trip to Zhejiang University, where we talk about migration. So these are all the things that Min has started. I wanted to close by talking about something a little bit personal. As a person, well, she's fearless, right? She has no fear. She's brave. But at the same time, she's exceedingly kind. Some of you may know that she actually received a mentorship award at UCLA, okay? She has mentored so many people, okay? Younger, junior scholars, but people like myself too, I consider her a, a peer, a friend, and also a mentor. So your wise counsel for people like myself, it's invaluable, men. So on this wedding day of yours, <laughs> congratulations, a big thank you to you. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you, Cindy. Our next uh, speaker for their tribute is Sociology Department Chair Edward Walker. Well, it's very nice to see all of you here this evening. Um, I'm Ed Walker, the Chair of the Sociology Department, and we're so very fortunate to have Min Zhou as our uh, colleague and, and faculty member in our department. Um, it's really an honor to be here celebrating uh, with you not one, but three major achievements by Professor Zhou. Uh, her 15 years of service as the Walter and Shirley Wong Chair in uh, U.S.-China Relations and Communications, uh, her election to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences last year, and her election to the American Academy of Sciences this year. While any one of these things would be a career-defining milestone uh, for many, for a colleague like Min, we have all three of these happening at the same time. <laughs> it's really quite incredible. Um, it's a mark of such achievement and one that we in the Department of Sociology find absolutely remarkable. It's hard not to look at Min's career to date and not be in awe of her accomplishments. Um, a number of the other programs will be talking about Min's accomplishments and uh, contributions in other areas, but I want to talk about Min's contributions in sociology. By any measure, Min is one of the towering figures in our discipline at both the domestic and the international levels. Min's contributions to sociology cut across a wide range of areas, uh, and she's made a major impact in each and every one of them. Uh, international migration and development, race and ethnicity, the sociology of development, economic sociology, uh, sociology of education, urban sociology. 
Her research has been cited over 36,000 times. It's a lot of citations. <laughs> Uh, in her work, uh, Min's not only reshaped each of these areas in which she's contributed, uh, but she's given us a new language of concepts. These are the concepts that many of us use in our research. Um, refinements to existing concepts as well, including segmented assimilation, ethnic capital, hyper-selectivity, ethnic enclaves, social status compensation, and much more. These concepts shape not only the understandings of topics that get used in graduate and undergraduate courses, but they also shape how this is taught in textbooks everywhere. Um, uh, it also shapes the broader public understanding of sociology uh, across the world. Uh, for this and so much more, we owe Professor Zhou an enormous debt of collective gratitude. I also want to speak to Min's character as a departmental colleague. Um, aside from being an award-winning teacher uh, of courses on Chinese immigration, Asian American communities, theories of ethnicity, uh, and international migration more generally, Min's an astounding and inspiring, inspiring teacher and mentor to our students. Her students in sociology regularly describe her as a world-class advisor, a trusted supporter of their work, who pushes them to question their assumptions and to be systematic in their approach. I was fortunate enough to see this for myself firsthand when Min and I advised a student together about two years ago. A student was doing a really interesting dissertation on environmental politics in China. Um, and um, you know, we, we saw this really incredibly engaged uh, advising style firsthand, and it was really impressive. Um, and in the department, I would also say that, um, and as a department chair, I would say I really appreciate this, that Min's also not shy about stepping up for things in our department, um, despite everything else that she has going on. Um, uh, and so she's repeatedly elected to serve on our department's executive committee, uh, often at the same time that she was holding down major obligations in Asian American studies, um, and is director of the UCLA Pacific Center. Uh, she did all of this while keeping up many other professional responsibilities in the American Sociological Association uh, and on the editorial boards of leading journals in sociology. Uh, for most of us, taking on all of this might mean we only sleep three hours a night, but Min's always so energetic, so Min's <laughs> sleeping pretty well, too. <laughs> so it's very, very impressive uh, to see. Um, and uh, I could say we really only hope that we can all model after Min's seemingly boundless capacity to support her students and colleagues. So Min, on behalf of the Department of Sociology and on behalf of all of us, congratulations on 15 wonderful years as the Walter and Shirley Wong Chair in U.S.-China Relations and Communications. And congratulations again on your highly impressive election uh, into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the National Academy of Sciences. You're a role model colleague, and we are incredibly unfortunate uh, to have you among our ranks. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ed. Our next speaker is Distinguished Professor of Sociology, Roger Waldinger. So I'm delighted to have this opportunity to participate in this wonderful and so greatly deserved celebration of my dear friend and colleague, Min Zhou. My friendship with Min is the result of a chance encounter that took place roughly four decades ago. At the time, I was an untenured assistant professor at the City College of uh, New York, a teaching institution that serves a largely immigrant origin and working class student body. Uh, and uh, at the time, the Department of Sociology was in a newly opened, though already dilapidated building that had been constructed in brutalist architectural style, where the younger faculty, such as myself, were consigned to what they called a four-pack of small windowless offices. One afternoon, I think it was a Friday, an unannounced guest appears at the door, door of my four-pack. The visitor turns out to be a young Chinese immigrant graduate student enrolled in the sociology PhD program at SUNY Albany, about to begin her field work in New York's Chinatown. I can't really remember the substance of our conversation, only that the person and the interchange made a deep impression. I do recall, and I think that this is Min's memory as well, that I ran off to the department office to make photocopies of some of my recent papers and publications, and I vaguely recall that Min accompanied me, but I'm not really certain. And, <laughs> And then the visitor vanished with no further trace until about a year or 18 months later when I received an envelope containing the acknowledgments page from her dissertation. A bit later, I began to notice that the person who arrived in my office as a graduate student was beginning to make a professional name for herself, publishing an article in our leading journal and then a well-regarded book. 
In 1990, Min moved to Baton Rouge to take up a position at Louisiana State University. And a year later, what was then a die-hard New Yorker headed west. Shortly thereafter, our department sought to make a hire in Asian American studies, and I was appointed to that year's search committee. With the experience of that chance encounter emblazoned in my mind, I knew exactly whom to call. I dialed the number. I encouraged the person who answered the phone to apply to our position, and the rest is history. Of course, neither of us had any inkling of just how that history would unfold. Although right from the start, Min had communicated some of the special qualities that have made it for her extraordinary success, it was only over time that the range of the complete person came into full view. Equipped with a level of energy and discipline that is at once legendary and beyond compare, the once young graduate student has found a way to combine the complete academic package in a way that eludes almost all of us. As demonstrated by her election to not one, but two of the most distinguished scholarly academies, Min has made fundamental scholarly contributions to the study of race, ethnicity, and migration, blazing the path to a globalized study of migration that is a model for the rest of the field. But as you all know, Min is more than researcher extraordinaire, thanks to her exceptional diplomatic qualities and her willingness to put her incredible energy at the service of the university. She is an institution builder, someone who has the skills required to get things done by working with people, as well as the commitment to find resources that enrich our collective lives. There's much more that could be said, but I think that I will simply conclude by telling you, Min, how glad I am that I was in my office on that afternoon when you visited City College. <laughs> Not only did that memorable encounter allow for the friendship and colleagueship that subsequently ensued, it gave me an upfront view of the exceptional career that you've pursued. And best of all, it's provided me with this opportunity to celebrate you amidst colleagues and friends. So thanks for being my treasured friend and colleague, and congratulations again on this wonderful occasion. Thank you, Roger. Our next speaker for tonight is Professor of Sociology, Anthony Christian Ocampo of Cal Poly Pomona. All right. Good evening, friends and family of Min. It's an honor to be here. Um, I was actually scheduled to be in Dayton, Ohio today, but when Melanie emailed me about this event, the first thing I did was book a 5 a.m. flight from Ohio so I could be here for this event. Um, just to let you know, that's how much Min uh, has meant to me as a mentor and a role model. I met Min um, close to 20 years ago when I was just a grad student in the Department of Sociology. She was one of the first, and actually she's been one of the only faculty who truly really understood um, the importance and validated why studying, researching, and teaching about Asian Americans mattered. Through her extensive work, she's taught generations of scholars, generations of students, that we can learn so much if we center the experiences of Asian Americans. We can learn about the way ethnic economies work. We can learn about the way immigrants stay connected to the homeland. We can learn about the way that children of immigrants adapt to life in the United States. But beyond Min's many scholarly achievements, the one thing that has always, always stood out to me is the unwavering support that Min has given to her students, both undergrad and graduate students. Anyone that's been to grad school knows that graduate school can be a very intimidating time. It's a time of lots of insecurity. It's a lots, lots of unsureness. And so um, I credit Min as being often the only one who was always confident when things seemed impossible. Confident that you get that first, um, get your dissertation done. Confident that you get that first article done, your first book done. Confident that you'd land that coveted uh, tenure track job. You know, I email men a lot of times and ask for letters of rec, and every time I email her, she always responds with, um, she says, I think you're gonna get a job, I think you're gonna get this job. And most of the time that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it is, it's meant so much to have an advisor that in the most matter of fact of way believes in me when I wasn't able to believe in myself. And I know for a fact that many of our students across the years, both at UCLA and beyond UCLA, feel exactly the same way. Um, I don't know if Min knows this, but in grad school, a bunch of the grad students would sometimes go on Google and look her up. And we would be so intimidated by her uh, dissertation length CV because she's accomplished so much. Her CV is like literally like 50 pages long. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that I'll always cherish about Min were all the conversations where she was never afraid to share the challenges that she faced throughout different chapters of her career. And those were the moments when she was willing to be vulnerable that really helped me power through the tough times. Because every time tough times would happen, I always think to myself, if Min can do it, if Min can handle what she handled, then certainly I can handle what's in front of me too. So, Congratulations again, Min, on behalf of all of your students. I want to express gratitude for the huge impact you've made and continue to make in our lives from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. So our next speaker is um, here with us virtually through video, and um, we have, can you, yes, set up. We have on video uh, Professor Pranama Mankakar of the Asian American Studies Center. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, say a few words about our wonderful colleague, Professor Min Zhu. Everybody in this gathering will have learned or will be about to learn about Professor Zhu's incredible scholarly achievements, so I won't reiterate them here. I want to pay tribute to Menju, the colleague, and Men, the teacher and mentor. So I first met Men when I arrived at UCLA as a new faculty member. I was soon to learn that Men is the ultimate anti-snob. She is consistent in the respect, empath in the respect, empathy, and generosity that she extends to students and academic superstars alike. She also has a remarkable ability to engage across disciplinary boundaries. And I've had the pleasure of being at conferences and public facing events with men and have been in awe of the genuine respect, openness, empathy, and generosity of spirit that suffuses her interactions with others. I have twice taught in classrooms in which she has held a class just before mine. Without being enrolled in her class, I can attest to the impact of her teaching and her personality in a large room full of undergraduates. In one instance, my class was at 9 a.m., which means that she had taught at 8 a.m. For those of you who have had the dubious pleasure of teaching early morning classes and large lecture classes at that, you would know what I mean when I say that the grumpiness of students who have to attend 8 a.m. classes can be pretty daunting. But when I would walk into a classroom in which Min had taught just as it was empty, I would be struck by how buzzed the students would be when, as they walked out. Min students, regardless of how sleep deprived they were, always seemed intellectually stimulated and engaged. Her ability to reach out to her students instill in them such an excitement for learning was unmistakable. I've also been on student committees with her and have been awestruck by the respect with which she treats the students she mentors, her empathy for them, and her generosity of spirit. Min models not only intellectual rigor and intellectual openness, but empathy, respect, and generosity of spirit, surely qualities desperately needed in these devastatingly troubled times. I'm profoundly, incredibly proud to be Minshu's colleague. Thank you for the opportunity to talk, to talk to you all today. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I am definitely there in spirit.
Thank you, Leroy and, and Gina, and, and thank you, Pranima. So our next part of our program tonight, it gives me my greatest pleasure to welcome Min and Professor Karen Umoto, Director of Asian American Studies Center, to have a short conversation with us. for coming and this is such an honor to be up here with you Min. I remember that um, I actually went to her job talk uh, many years ago. I was a grad student here and that's the first time I learned about structural equation modeling. <laughs> um, and since then she's always been someone I've looked uh, up to and when I came back to UCLA six years ago um, after 22 years at the University of Hawaii uh, one of the first faces to meet me back here was Min, and has been a strong supporter and so active with our Asian American Studies Center, despite everything else that you've heard she's been doing. So, nice to have a conversation with you tonight. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Thank you. So, I have three questions um, for you, and, and uh, as Cindy said, this is not a wedding, nor is it a retirement party. <laughs> She's still on the upswing with a lot of things um, in the hopper uh, that she's still working on today. So, um, but you know, you've heard today so many of the accomplishments that you've made over the years. And one of the things that um, in Asian American studies we always emphasize is that it's not good enough just to be a scholar and, and build the canon, but it's really also about uh, having an impact on the world. And you have done that. And so I was wondering, in retrospect, looking at your work, uh, what do you think has been the most impactful? And what words of wisdom might you have for young scholars in this room about leading a life in academia where you could have not only impact on the scholarly traditions of our times, but also on the world? Just a small question. Wow, that's a good, a big question and a good question. And it made me think about uh, my journey. Uh, but first of all, I thank you so much for coming. It meant so much to me. And I'm not going to retire yet. <laughs> I love you. I love my colleagues and students. And I love my friends and who a lot of them come from far and near to, uh, to, to celebrate uh, together. And this is a collective celebration, I should say. And it, I thank you so much for coming. And I really love being at UCLA, and I love to be part of this very supportive community. And I'm also very uh, thankful for Walter and Shelley uh, for your generous support for UCLA and also for establishing this endowed chair. And your vision is really long lasting and uh, you know, dated back in, uh, in 2009. And it's uh, very timely uh, today. And this endowed chair, actually you said in, it helped like raise your visibility. Actually, it's because of the endowed chair that I am becoming more visible. Because without this endowed chair, I could not have achieved what I have achieved, especially when I am doing my work beyond UCLA. So the endowed chair really helps me to uh, enable me to connect to the general public, to connect to the main, mainstream media, to help me translate my scholarly work to uh, public knowledge, to enhance understanding of uh, Chinese America, Asian America, US-China relations, and, um, and you know, the, the connections between the university and, uh, and the community. So you asked about um, you know, the impact of my work. I should say um, 
one of one of the most profound impact of my work is I have students, and I, you know, I see my students grow, and um, you know, go out and make impact. So, so that's something that I'm very proud of, that I'm very happy to see. And then if you ask me about you know, words of wisdom of how to do that, I'm not wise. I, I don't have words of wisdom. But I'm just working hard and focus on what I do best. And um, you know, I just keep on doing. Uh, what I'm doing, and I'm very privileged, and I'm very honored to be in this institution, um, in which I could, um, I have so many intellectual giants whose shoulder I can stand on, and so many young minds whose curiosity and creative energy that keep me inspire and keep me going. So my students are actually the ones who keep me going. Um, so I'm very happy to be here um, and to you know, work with students. And the students also help me. And the other thing I, I, I did is um, uh, I want to, you know, oh, I always want to uh, weave my research with my uh, teaching and service. Like I, my first work is um, just now Roger had already <laughs> talked about is the study of New York Chinatown. So that's my first um, first um, research project, and that Chinatown studies really taught me into appreciating the real life of people that I'm studying uh, because. You know, if I had not been access to Chinatown, the field, I would probably just crunch numbers and run structural <laughs> equation <agree>. models, right? <laughs> um, but, but the Chinatown workers and entrepreneurs, they really helped me, uh, you know, guide me into their world, help me find explanations of what makes Chinatown tick and what enables them who are seemingly are very underprivileged and also exploited workers to move ahead in society on their own term. And then in turn, I can use that knowledge to, for my teaching. And very importantly, uh, through my research, I build connections to the community. I have very strong social capital that people in the community gave me that helped me mentor my students better. So my students come to me saying, Professor Zhou, I need to get into Chinatown. Do you have any contact? I say, yes, I do. And I have some contacts that I keep using, like Peter in Chinatown Service Center, and then a lot of the, the, the people in the community that help us, help me, and also help me help my students. So, so research, teaching, and then also service is all intertwined. And uh, so it builds the ecosystem. So if there is any wisdom of words, I would you know, think that how to relay, you know, build your research with your uh, mission to teach and to service and to uh, service to the university as well as to the community. And you know, it's not just simple give, give and take, but build an ecosystem that works. And at least it works for me. And it couldn't be better said. So I see a lot of nods among our graduate students in the back. So I think um, you really epitomize um, all of that. So thank you. Um, they also say that those who are wise are humble. So I think, there's, um, you know, given the world situation, I would be remiss not to ask you about your thoughts about US-China relations today. And not only the, the, the world situation, but its impact on Chinese Americans and Asian Americans here in the US. And also conversely, the impact of Asian Americans and Chinese Americans on international relations. And if you don't mind saying a few things about that. Uh, yes, we all know that US China today are the two largest country and two largest economy in the world. 
So they are so interdependent and so intertwined that one could not do better without the other. So for Chinese Americans, China is our homeland. Or like to me, China is my homeland. I'm Chinese immigrant. And to our children or grandchildren, the second or third generation who grew up and who were born and raised here, China is their ancestral homeland, right? And the US is my adopted homeland, is the home of our children and grandchildren. So both China and US, the, you know, it's kind of our, we are connected to it. We are in, um, intertwined with it. Um, so if US-China relations are good, we, all, we are all feeling good. And we are all feeling proud to be Chinese. And you know, we benefit from the good relationship. And if US-China relations are bad, like in the past few years, we all suffer. And especially in the current difficult time uh, when, you know, when um, anti-Asian racism is on the rise, it also exacerbates by the worsening US-China relations. So we Asian Americans uh, have the uh, kind of have the obligation and also, um, you know, kind of should do um, everything we could to improve the U.S.-China relations. Yeah, you know, in these times of international tensions, I know that, you know, there have been periods of U.S.-Japan tensions as well. And I think, and we see tensions uh, across the globe in this time. And I think one of the things that we can see from this kind of vantage point of academia, as well as in the community, is the importance of people-to-people -people relations, no matter what the state-to-state -state relations might be, but people-to-people -people relations um, is so important. And I think we have unique opportunities as in academia um, you know, to, to affect that. So I was wondering if you might have um, any lessons you might want to share from history, from your own experiences, about what we can do at the univer in universities, right, to help build those people-to-people -people, people relations. Uh, yes, people-to-people -people relations are very important because people influence our government, right? People also influence government policy. In today's um, increasingly um, hyper-diverse world, uh, in the, like in the United States, uh, improving people-to-people -people relations requires mutual understanding, uh, requires that we respect, uh, we appreciate, and um, we work with one another even if we are different. Right? So we respect uh, differences, we appreciate differences, and we work together. So um, I should applaud uh, the efforts of UCLA in promoting EDI, uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's an important way that the university is doing to help create a more welcoming and inclusive environment for learning and just working together. So the, currently, I'm actually serving on the EDI uh, Special Committee of the UCLA Senate, Academic Senate Executive Board. So that special committee, the Senate has an EDI committee, but the special committee also makes sure that EDI work is integrated into every single Senate committee work. And then the Senate's EDI committee also makes sure that the campus uh, all campus unit should in, integrate uh, the, the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion work into their uh, uh, work schedule. So that's from the top. And from the bottom up, we also need to do collective work. And you are the model. You lead UCLA Asian American Studies Center on this multimedia textbook project. And that's a great project. And that multimedia textbook project is on Asian American and Pacific Islander. Um, uh, so it's, it's to, 
to promote cultural history of Asian Americans as well as their contribution to American society to high school and college curriculum. So that's an important work. So these are kind of work that, um, that we can promote from the bottom up. Uh, so collectively, we, we could enhance the mutual understanding of each other's cultures, history, and origins. And then we all, that way, we could appreciate our being and also our core values more. I think we're all doing people-to-people -people relations, right? So yeah. I think that's, that's one of the beauties of our work. So thank you for promoting the textbook, too. <laughs> yes. I don't need to do the announcement about it at the end. Um, <laughs> um, it's a great project. Yeah. But, but thank you so much. Um, we have a little surprise for you. So uh, I was wondering if maybe you could take a seat and, uh, and enjoy this little surprise. Everyone give a big hand to Min and Karen. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Philip. I'm Professor Joe's son. Um, I'm also a professor. I'm a professor at UC San Diego. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for coming to the event and my, um, to commemorate my mother's work. Uh, my wife and I uh, couldn't be here because we actually have a newborn here, baby Jane. So in addition to my mother's many professional accomplishments, the latest, uh, her latest thing is that she is a new grandma here. And um, we love you and we can't wait for you all to, uh, to meet the baby and stuff, so um, hopefully everyone enjoys this event, so. These are those like tearful moments, you know? Um, that was beautiful. And congratulations on being a grandmother again. You know, one of the things that's really um, fun when you're working with people um, and you've been working with them for a very long time um, is that um, you discover talents and gifts that you never knew of. So um, the next, uh, we, we're closing with a performance by an old friend and colleague of Min's and many of ours, uh, us, uh, and this is uh, King Kok, King Kok Chung. Um, and little did we, did I know, and did I realize that she sings Chinese opera, Cantonese opera, um, and she's performing with Wen Qi Wang, um, who's a professor of biostatistics. And I'm sure many of his colleagues didn't know that he performs Chinese <laughs> opera as well. So let me. <laughs> Yeah, she's not for hire, she wants to say. So let me turn it over to uh, King Kok. Thank you so much. Where's my purple hairpin? <laughs> 彩影花枝冷月下明官宇排號十郎人痴傻 
世人会博名花，花变落杨家，落拓飞花，负了君清雅，秀才还我猜。此事缘分呢呀，真真是缘分呢呀，这猜作。梅文，原拜呀原拜石榴群，逢上住差轮你分呢家。初见面，两不相识，到此失惊怕，受听蝶乱花，力劫不再是千金家，落拓不配攀丝马。曾因不报未能受礼茶，莫起浪才华风尚八劫，你十郎未有家。仰慕周敏你茶，当成陈玉花。我哋阿 Sir 都咩又说系急婚礼。终居梦上半柳芽，心暗自爱无他，莫非真真缘分也？自觉心酸，自惭被变花，破落那堪共浪花。幽树被变花，他朝托。富世名下望，终有日讨杨梅花。烟雨笑话，空对彩画，惊怕明似秋霜，风雨断哀牙，惊怕落拓生歌，君说玉有瑕，太羞家。力劫珍珠不怕狼泪沙，你介意我十一狼把？回<笑>眸心归影风茶，哎呀，我如何能变假？<笑>